Hey guys, Fushida of Team Bad Yugi's here. And uh, I'm, I'm hot and fresh back from the Invasion Vengeance sneak peek of this weekend. And I wanted to give you a deck profile of the deck I'll be playing for the next couple weeks. Because I just finished it off. And uh, I entered the 44 person tournament at the sneak peek event. I got fought and I got a uh, fifth. Uh, there were five rounds. I uh, lost 2-0 to uh, Barrier Stun round one. Uh, they won the die roll. It's very unfortunate. Um... But then after that, I didn't lose a single game for the rest of the day, 2 0 each of my opponents. But I'll talk about the rounds later. Let's get right into the profile. I'm going to start with uh, 3 Shadow Mist, 3 Bubs, 3 Tin Goldfish, very important for uh, making Bahamut Shark, 1 Goblin Bird, and 1 Summoner Monk. Summoner Monk is still necessary. I still I hate this card because your worst hands are your hands with too many monsters. And this guy, when you have in your hand, like, if you have that and, like, uh, multiple heroes in hand, your hands are just pretty much, like, absolutely horrible. Because you need those power spells to make your combos and opening plays that much stronger. But I, he's still necessary because, in the end, him plus a Shadow Mist, like, him pulls, he pulls Shadow Mist out of the deck. And it's better than Hero Lives, but, like, those cards just necessary evils of the deck, I suppose. Because they just make boards that much stronger. Now let's get to the spell lineup. Of Triple Desires... Triple Desires is extremely important because uh, you really do want to see it that much. I mean, spares can be spent for Summoner Monk. It's, it really never came up. Every time I resolved two, I never regret it. Every time, it doesn't really matter that much. Um, I did pro, I did have to pro set one once. Like There were times where I just like didn't really do anything with it, but that's okay. The fact that I was able to resolve one even is just so important for this deck because digging for that extra card is super important. Yes, you do lose like bulbs and... Shadow Mist sometimes, but it's worth it. You just, it's just running the numbers in the end. Like, it's a little bit, it's a little bit silly, it's a little bit risky, but you know, it, it really works out so much at the time. Plus, I play a bit more traps, so that also helps out. Uh, we have three hero lives, uh, very important for those combos and, you know, losing life points. Uh, three instant fusion. Now that you can recycle Norden with, uh, Totally Awesome, that's very important. Three mask changes. Um, I used to wonder if I'm um, just playing two is right, but now that um, there's just a lot of really good opening plays that just involve not using Shadow Mist search effect, hooting this, getting a Bubble Man out to your hand, like that is so much more important. Plus, like Tin Goldfish, Shadow Mist, and this is just a really easy Tree Toad, uh, Dark Law. So three of these is totally necessary. Plus, losing copies off of uh, Desires, it's just it's just things that happen because sometimes you have to raw Desires before anything. We have three Rotas and an extra Goblinberg in the form of Rota that can also be Hero, which is really important, you know. Setting out your hand, dropping a Bubble Man, Special Summon Bubble Man from deck. Yeah, that's pretty much how it plays. And I have one Soul Charge and one Twin Twisters. So that means that um, uh, Twin Twisters is the only spell that isn't for your combo base. It's the only, you could say, trap in spell form. Uh, over here, I got a list of cards that I've cut. I cut Regeki out of the main deck over the day because I just found it not necessary. Plus, um, like, so many ABC players were just preemptively, like, banishing out their Buster Drake, Buster Dragon, just so it wouldn't get, um, uh, what, what do you call it? Uh, Gamma Sealed? So, it's just, like, this card just wasn't even necessary anymore. So, I don't really miss it at all. Yeah, I'm cutting it in future builds. I'll explain all these, uh, as they come up. Let's get to the traps now. Which is a little bit heavier now. Because that's something else I did. I also cut, um, ooh, that's out of order. We have first our three trap holes. These are for trap tricks for Fleasia because that's your other rank four that you like making first turn to make uh, more impressive boards that really hurt your opponent. We have uh, four other traps here. I used to have two uh, Phantom Knight swords, but in the event we had to take out uh, cards and put in cards from the new set for the tournament. And I took out one of the swords, I put in one of the Burgostoma traps, and I liked it all day. It's like, you know what? I don't really feel like I need two swords after playing it today. And I just don't really feel it's necessary anymore. Because I also think uh, other people are also taking out Regeki in favor of Book of Eclipse. And this card doesn't do crap against Book of Eclipse. So I'm not playing that anymore. Um, one Dimension Barrier. I'm not sure if I'll bump this to two. I need to test it more. I definitely like it. Um, I might start taking out Strikes for more barriers because I really like not paying life points. Because not paying my life points is much preferred. Um, and then my Counter Traps. I have two Strikes and one Warning. Uh, very good, but you don't need three strikes. I used to side the third one, but I took it out because uh, of Dimension Barrier. I feel that the Pendulum matchup 
is now like just much stronger with a uh, dimension barrier in my deck. That's why I kind of want to pump it to two because it'll just really hurt metal foes and it'll hurt uh, it hurts everything. Like that card is just very versatile in the fact of what it can stop because it can stop anything. If they try to twin twister it, oh man, chain dimension barrier. So I'm just giving you a spiel here about your card that you already know is good on why it's good. So I cut these out of the side because I just ne I never felt like I don't I only side in two against. Uh, other decks, but I always put in three against Pendulum decks, but now that I don't really feel it's necessary, I'll just put in two against Pendulum decks. So I cut the third one entirely. And the Strike is the same thing. And then I also play one Dark Bribe. Um, this card is clutch as hell. It is amazing. It is like your best way to negate Union Hanger, because they'll still get a Surge, and so you'll still get Dark Law Effect. Um, it also gets rid of those Regekis, those Book of Eclipses. It gets rid of the stupid things. And even better, if they play out defensive and you go push it next turn and they have a strike, no they don't. They have a Dark Law effect to banish. That's what they have. It's really nice. It's card is absolutely nutty. I used to play two though a while back, but I cut it down to one before this started. And I'd say I don't really miss it. Um, I used to side one and then I started main decking it for Trito just to block up on the defense. But I really still found that I only, I really don't want to see multiples of these, especially if I don't get my combos off, because then I'm giving them cards. Cards they didn't expect to have, which opens up doors of possibility. I get the uh, extra here. Here's our heroes. We have two Dark Laws, one Anki, one Acid. Acid's very important. Make sure you play it because that Bubble Man to pop out four back row or something, it happens. It's plus hitting scales is amazing. One Norden because of the instant fusions. One, two Utopias. I used to play Utopia uh, Prime, but I cut it because now there's just a lot more main deck removal of monsters. Whether it be uh, Book of Eclipses, ABC Buster Dragon, um, this deck which can make Castell mighty easy, and uh, it's just the fact that I, I really found myself never resolving the second effect. Yes, I liked holding uh, Shadow Mist underneath it, but now I just wait, I just don't detach the Shadow Mist, I detach Utopia instead, and I just let them kill it to give me a Bubble Man. That way they don't want to kill it, because they don't want to give me that extra level 4. Which is cool, because that means you have to play around it more difficultly. Uh, one Castell, one Dire Wolf, one Abyss Dweller, and, uh, one, uh, Spider Shark. That is something. I used to have a second Dire Wolf because, uh, I had, uh, taken out some cards out of the extra deck. I'm like, what do I put in? What do I put in? So I was, I was playing two Dire Wolf. I didn't really know what I wanted to do. So I decided to play it safe and just have, you know, more pops. Because, I mean, it pulls out strikes when I don't want to see them, so it's nice. But I realized I never made two, like, since I put it in. So I, I just cut it, and it's stupid. I put in this. I put this back in. You can also put in cards like Digusto Emerald, though I don't feel it's necessary because of uh, this card recycling the most important cards, which are your waters. Um, you can put in Gagaga Samurai. That's a card I still wish I could fit in here. It's still the 16th extra deck card. If I ever start really hating these cards, like let's say PK Fire drops off the face of the earth, which it won't because it just won the YCS. But I mean, I would love to cut Dweller. But Dweller is really nice for the 500 pump. Makes this 31. Makes uh. Mastio Acid 31, makes Bubble Man 13, which is really nice. Um, he's, of course, 22. Makes Bahamut Shark 31, it's crazy. 26s are everywhere in here. And it makes Totally Awesome 27, which is so cool. So yeah, these are all very nice. I love also this against Magic Specters, because if they Tempest it, you'll get your effect to special summon a, a guy from the graveyard. So you can get a Shadow Mist, search for a Mask Change, and just continue to go in, because you're making them spend their cards. Or, if you have, like, no cards in hand, no cards in grave, always bring back a Bubble Man, because then you draw two new cards. So, well, not always, but if you think you can draw into some to some good stuff, like, as in not dead cards, like, as long as you have Heroes back in deck, then odds are you're going to get Bubble Man, get that back. Also, traps. Traps are nice. So, yeah. I cut out the second Dire Wolf. And, uh, Rafflesia for the first turn plays, as well as Bahamut Shark. These are probably your best first turn summons. That, and then this in some matchups. I mean, Dweller as well, I guess. Yeah. And then, of course, the two Totally Awesomes. This card's negation is super, super crazy for protecting Dark Law. Oh my gosh. People just... Oh man. It, it went in. It went in. Side deck. Alrighty. We're running minimal hand traps here. I used to play two Maxi, but I cut one. Yes. Yes. It is a good card. You, go, you can go plus three, plus four off of it. Very easy. Your opponent is, feels super pressured. It makes them miserable. But you know what? These cards make your opponent miserable too. I didn't want to cut either of these. Because unlike Maxi, dropping two of them, going second, is good. 
Whereas with this, it's like you drop one during their turn, very good, very good. But then you drop one during their turn, it's not as good. Um, whereas with these, if you have both Gamma Seals, drop, drop, crash in, it's fine. You go through, this is amazing, because like you drop one on their turn, they lose their best card. You drop another one, you can take out uh, Utopia the Lightning, or you can take out, you know, if you think, like, if it's in the mirror match, it's amazing. That's when I side these in. I side these in for the mirror match. Taking out, um, like, uh, Totally Awesome, turn one, and then turn two, I take out Dark Law. Because that's probably what they want to do, and it's just absolutely punishing. Absolutely punishing. Very important. But yeah, the other cards, I just don't want to, I just don't want to see two of these. So I, I cut one. Um, it was very nice. I didn't miss it. Um, now it's time for the spells. We have three Book of Eclipses. I'm glad. Uh, I was gonna, I was, after I took Regekia as a man, I was gonna put it in the side, and then I realized, wait, no, I want consistency here. I wanna, I wanna see my sides, I wanna know what I'm expecting, and I wanna see what I put in. So I'm putting, I'm just putting in three clips, I'm, I'm ditching the variety, because I mean, this card is just better for me going second. Destruction is just not that great right now. Um, yeah, so I, I ended up taking these cards out of my side, I guess you could say. Wait, this trap should go over there. Okay. Anyways, moving on from those. We have three system down. For what? I, I don't know, man. I'm, I'm just putting them in. I don't even know what you side this against. I have no, no clue, no clue. It's not like it blows out anything or nothing. Um, Two and three twin twisters for rogue. Man, I'll tell you right now, against that barrier stun, I really wish I had a compulse. Sometimes I'm really thinking, like, should I, should I put a compulse in the side deck? No, no. And then the two anti-spells for, for pendulums and slowing down other decks that I feel is worth slowing down. Pretty good against blue eyes, I've heard. Uh, pretty, pretty good. But that's the deck, folks. Uh, did really solid. Like I said, I, I got 2 0 by Barrier Stun. Very unfortunate, but that, hey man, like I said, you're just running the numbers when you're playing this game. Uh, let's see here. After Barrier Stun, I played, uh, actually I played another Masked Hero deck, um, 2 would him with the Swiftness. Uh, his deck I don't think was really complete, so it's just kind of, but I mean, he was there. Uh, let's see here, after that, let's see here. Round 4, I remember what I played, round 5, I remember what I played, but round 3? Oh, I played Magic Specters. Uh, I 2 would Magic Specters because I just never used Dark Loss Effect to, at, to banish one from hand. So I was just crippling their resources without letting their Tempest, Tempests go off. They should have searched for Tornado. Tornado gives me problems. Uh, let's see here. Round four, I played against Resonator Fire Fists. The guy was super cool. Definitely my favorite match of the day. We talked to Deck Theory for like a good 20, 30 minutes after our round. And we just kind of went off and just bounced numbers and stuff. And it was silly. It was really good. And then round five, I finally played ABC. And I uh, 2 would him pretty quickly. He was... Uh, he was pretty jaded from the round before, so I just kind of capitalized on that, and I tried to make him as salty as possible. And that led to him getting frustrated with himself, and it made the round really super easy. Uh, I definitely recommend being a jerk. Um, good Yu-Gi-Oh's? Yeah. No, not really, not really. Um, I felt really bad for him, though. I just kind of opened up really well. I sided in the one maxi, and I opened it. And... Uh, I just had all of the outs to him. It really wasn't even fair. There was almost no skill in the game, too. But I mean, hey, I mean, that's, again, Yu-Gi-Oh's just running the numbers, and this deck is really good with numbers. Odds are definitely in your favor. But hey, that's the deck profile. This is, uh, I definitely recommend it to you guys. Try out if you can get your hands on the cards. Um, this is Prashido of Team Bad Yu-Gi's, signing out.